Have you ever wondered why SpaceX's Starship rocket launches are unlike anything you've seen before? If you're a rocketry fan or simply curious about the innovative processes happening at SpaceX, today's update will certainly pique your interest. We'll delve into a strategy SpaceX employs that is utterly distinct and potentially revolutionary in the realm of rocket launches. So, what sets the launch of the SpaceX Starship apart from other rockets? Most rockets use hold-down clamps, heavy-duty hardware that locks the rocket in place, only releasing at the exact moment of takeoff. However, SpaceX does things differently. Instead, the clamps are released before the countdown begins, and the rocket's engines are slowly throttled up while still resting on the pad. Now, you might be wondering why SpaceX would adopt this unconventional method. This method, known as the no-clamp slow-throttle-up strategy, has some intriguing advantages. It allows the rocket's engines to warm up and reach their optimum operating conditions before liftoff, potentially providing a more reliable and smoother ascent into space. Also, this process gives ground control more time to identify and rectify any problems that might occur during the engine startup sequence, increasing overall mission safety. Another fascinating point is the comparison to past rocket launches. The no-clamp slow-throttle-up strategy means the Starship stays on the launch pad almost twice as long as the famed Saturn V rocket took to clear the tower. This extended time frame on the pad signifies a noticeable departure from traditional launch procedures and exemplifies SpaceX's out-of-the-box approach. Let's remember the recent test flight, where SpaceX's no-clamp slow-throttle-up strategy led to some unexpected challenges. For all its advantages, this approach does have a flip side. A longer time on the pad exposes the rocket to a greater risk of unforeseen incidents. And during the recent test flight, it seems this strategy played a central role in some of the difficulties the Starship encountered. Because the rocket spent more time on the pad, there was a significant increase in the amount of debris that accumulated. Now, any rocket launch is likely to produce a considerable amount of debris. However, the Starship's longer duration on the pad meant that this debris had more time to settle. Some of this debris was blown back towards the pad, the nearby facilities, and even onto the rocket itself due to the immense power of the rocket's engines. But the question is, how much of an impact could this debris really have? Well, in this case, the repercussions were serious. A substantial amount of debris was responsible for the damage to three of the Starship's engines. These engines are the lifeblood of the Starship, propelling it towards its destined orbit. The debris had a catastrophic effect, leading to the failure of these engines and likely causing further damage to other systems on board. What's more, this incident not only jeopardized the physical condition of the rocket, but also significantly disrupted the flight plan. An incorrect fuel mixture, another consequence of the debris interference, forced SpaceX to adjust their plans. Now, SpaceX isn't a company to be deterred by setbacks. Instead, they use these experiences to adapt and innovate. Following the Starship test flight, SpaceX came up with two main solutions to ensure the future success of the project. The first solution aims to address the core issue, the time the Starship spends on the launch pad. It took approximately five to six seconds for the engines to fire up during the maiden launch. The longer this process takes, the more the rocket is exposed to potential debris damage. Recognizing this, SpaceX is making adjustments to significantly reduce the ignition time. For the upcoming Booster 9's launch, they are planning to slash this time by around 50%, aiming for about 2.5 seconds. This considerable decrease may not sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but in the high-stakes world of rocket launches, every second matters. In addition to decreasing the rocket's exposure time on the pad, the company is working on a secondary solution, the implementation of a deluge system. The deluge system, also referred to as a water-jacketed sandwich system, is a time-tested strategy used in the world of rocketry. While it may not be a novel invention, its efficacy is undeniable. This system protects rockets and their surroundings from potential damage caused by the rocket's own exhaust. The principle behind it is relatively straightforward. The deluge system works by spraying large volumes of water into the space beneath the rocket's engines during liftoff. This creates a sort of water barrier that shields the rocket and the launch pad from the tremendous acoustic energy produced during launch. In the past, Musk has famously stated that SpaceX aims to build an orbital launch site that doesn't need a flame diverter for Starship. 
But lessons learned from the recent flight prompted SpaceX to install a transpirational steel plate system under the Starship. This system works by maintaining a steady flow of water so high that the temperature at the steel plate never exceeds 1,000 degrees Celsius, and the water doesn't boil until it's outside the plenum. Theoretically, this will prevent the plate from damage and instead produce an impressive wall of steam. These improvements in the Starship project will bring SpaceX one step closer to their goal of landing on the moon. However, SpaceX's vision is not limited to the moon. They aim to use Starship for a variety of missions, including offering services to other customers. SpaceX plans to use the vast capacity of the fully reusable Starship to open up opportunities in deep space and closer to home. This includes the capture and repair of satellites in orbit, their return to Earth, or their transfer to a new operational orbit. One can imagine the Starship's fairing opening like the mouth of a largemouth bass to capture or discharge payloads in orbit. In the past, satellites that have malfunctioned or reached the end of their operational life were typically decommissioned and left to become space junk. However, with Starship, we may be looking at a future where these invaluable pieces of technology can be captured, repaired, and returned to service. Above all, we must remember that Musk founded SpaceX with the dream of colonizing Mars. This dream will require hundreds, perhaps thousands, of Starship flights. And despite the fiery end of the first test, this dream edges ever closer to reality. Since the first orbital launch of Starship seven weeks ago, the SpaceX team has been diligently addressing and enhancing the launch pad. The hard work of the Starbase team is truly commendable. They've excavated the dirt and concrete beneath the orbital launch mount, dismantled the previous pipeline system, and installed the new water-cooled steel plate. The extensive excavation work around the orbital launch mount has been accompanied by the installation of sheet piles throughout. Indeed, SpaceX has shown us the importance of embracing failure as an opportunity to learn, adapt, and improve. As we eagerly anticipate the upcoming Booster 9 launch, we can't help but marvel at SpaceX's relentless pursuit of progress and innovation. That's all for today's SpaceX update. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.